Zack Snyder's Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is the sequel to his 2013 film Man of Steel. Both films feature his grounded and very contemplative approach to the character of Superman. Snyder attempts to deconstruct the character in an overly analytical and cynical world where his hope is only referenced and never fully realized. In this video, I will be analyzing the character of Superman in Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. The characters and world of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice live in the aftermath of the final cataclysmic events of Man of Steel. The movie opens up with the civilian perspective of those events, with Snyder almost inappropriately using 9-11 imagery to allegorically illustrate the significance of these events, as the world will never be the same going forward. Snyder and the writers David S. Goyer and Chris Terrio want the audience to believe that Superman has settled in as the iconic symbol of hope that we're all used to. This comes from expected cultural familiarity instead of narrative establishment. The last movie, Man of Steel, ended with the prospects of inaugurating Superman as the iconic Superman, even though the last public appearance of that character in the movie was his disastrous fight with Zod, viewed by the public with existential dread. This movie opens up with the immediate decline of the character with no building off of the ending of the first film and no initial establishment of where the character's current status as a hero stands. We are launched into a world where seemingly most of the population fear or scorn Superman. Even with the ultimate addition, there's still 15 to 30 minutes missing from the beginning of the movie to show, not tell, the audience where Superman is as a hero. What's worse is that Snyder confuses gods and heroes. Gods are on their clouds, heroes are among the people. For someone who draws parallels between mythology and comics, he sure missed that major difference of gods being viewed as impossibly mighty and heroes being viewed as humanly aspirational. The world reacts to Superman with exaggeration, divine worship, rabid hatred, pessimistic analysis, bureaucratic consideration, none of which Superman wanted to incite by his presence. There is an ever-growing distance between Superman and the people of Earth. It's the fault of both parties. People fear what they don't understand and neither try to understand or be understood. Superman refuses to address false accusations against him and hesitates to publicly take responsibility for his actions as even though he didn't kill the men in Africa, he was still involved in the destruction of Smallville and Metropolis. A government committee ironically gives themselves the authority to determine whether or not Superman should even be allowed a role in their society. They see Superman as a rogue variable, one that must be controlled and held accountable. They platform victims of Superman, unknowingly playing into Lex Luthor's villainous and overly convoluted plot in order to guilt Superman into facing the justice of the government that is meant to represent the world's population. Snyder attempts to have Superman face real-world consequences. Unfortunately, he and the boys don't know how to write a solution to this, so they just bomb that plotline and add to the existential angst of Superman as the capital bombing is the final straw. He begins to see himself as an all-knowing god holding himself to those standards. His failure at the Capitol shows that he is unworthy to serve the people of Earth. If he can't save everybody, then he won't save anybody. Snyder is a fan of Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. In that story, Superman compromises his own individuality and becomes an agent of the US government to remain a hero, needing to retain the image as the world's symbol of hope because the government would have smeared him as an enemy of the state, like Batman. 
Snyder had the opportunity to approach that concept as a solution to Superman's arc of pondering if he has the right to interfere in human affairs. Firstly, surrendering himself completely to the government so they can make those decisions for him and attempt to put them and himself at ease. After some conflict, he can come to his own solution that it's best to act based on his own judgment as he belongs to no country or government. He belongs to the world and will act in humanity's best interest. Instead, mankind's psychoanalysis of every decision Superman makes cripples him into a self-reflective depression. He begins to see that the world is worse with the involvement of heroes. This is what brings him into conflict with Batman. Clark begins a surface level investigation into the Bat Vigilante of Gotham. He deflects the criticism pointed towards him onto Batman. The writers subtly display the theme of one man can't decide whose lives matter over another. Superman again has a problem of lack of communication. He apparently discovers that Bruce Wayne is actually Batman, a truth that he never investigates deeper. There's no exploration or development of understanding between the two morally similar characters. There's no relationship between the characters at all, making the eventual partnership at the end of the film feel undeserved. Batman has xenophobic motivations as he generalizes that all aliens are inherently evil. Paranoia driven nightmares fuel his crusade. Unable to look deeper into the character of Superman, he doesn't see that there is a man under that S until the very end of the film. Traditionally, Batman is meant to respect Superman and admire Clark Kent, the man raised by two loving parents who taught their son to be a kind and altruistic man who chooses to use his great power for good. And Superman is meant to understand the need for Batman and empathize with Bruce Wayne, the tragic orphan whose only way of inspiring hope in a city like Gotham is to become a figure of fear for the criminals and hope for the hopeless, like Bruce himself. Superman only makes one attempt to force Batman into retirement before going into self-imposed exile himself. The only thing that causes Batman to change his view of Superman is the revelation that he has a connection with this world. He has people he loves. Batman doesn't really help Superman out of human decency. He doesn't more or less out of caution as he's seen a world where Superman loses the only reason he's on the side of good. There's no attempt to form any gradual relationship between the two iconic characters, both in the story and in the writing. They viewed each other with spite, disapproval, and disdain for the majority of the movie. Superman is no symbol of hope for Batman to be persuaded by. Batman is no misunderstood figure of justice for Superman to better understand. The only reason that they see a purpose in one another is that Superman can defeat Doomsday and Batman can save Superman's mother. Beyond that, there's no real try from either character to better understand one another. In this movie, Superman has a bit of an identity crisis, feeling like he must choose between Clark and Superman. There is a great responsibility that lies on Lois Lane. Her career and her relationship with Superman come into conflict as she's constantly put into danger and Superman causes international incidents to rescue her. They both worry that Clark can't be Superman and be with Lois. Lois was the one to convince Clark to reveal himself to the world after spending years following his father, Jonathan's advice to stay hidden, so she feels even more responsible for how Superman influences the world. She's meant to try and bring out the best in him. She wants him to face his responsibilities and the reality of this world. But she doesn't have all the answers herself, especially since her time is divided with trying to solve an unnecessary conspiracy. This has Clark go back to the only other woman in his life, 
Martha lets him know that he does have a choice. He can put away the cape and just try to live a life as Clark with Lois, almost echoing the advice given by his father when he was alive. Clark just needs to hear that the world will be fine without Superman, something that might actually be true in this universe, as the world has seemingly gotten worse with him around. I feel that Martha lacks hope in the world and in Clark's ability to inspire hope, so it subvertly guides Clark towards returning to his passive ways. It could be an attempt to protect her son, but when it comes to Clark's greater purpose, traditionally, the Kents are hesitant, but they understand that he's meant for more. After the capital bombing, Clark retires as Superman. He has a surreal experience with his dead human father that is never explained. Jonathan offers his son the advice to form a single attachment to his adopted world in the form of someone he loves. This will hopefully lessen the pain of being a hero. Superman is now entirely motivated to serve the planet in order to protect and honor Lois. This only justifies the actions in the beginning of the film, the actions that triggered most of the conflict in this movie. With no lessons necessarily learned, he can live better with his actions as long as Lois is safe and there for him. It puts the pressure of Superman's virtuistic alignment entirely on Lois. If she were to die, so were Superman's ability to care for humanity. The nightmare sequence shows a world where Superman loses Lois to the world that he reluctantly protected from itself. Snyder believes Superman is just one loss away from becoming an authoritative god, a major misunderstanding of the character. The people in this movie view Superman as the second coming, for better or for worse. They don't believe a man can fly because he is no man. The perception of Superman as some form of the almighty, the most heaviestly felt with Lex Luthor, the film's annoying lackluster antagonist. Luthor spends the movie not as the outlier but as the extremist among the public. He's not alone in thinking Superman is a threat. He's just unhinged in his reaction. A problem that I have is that Luthor knows Superman's secret identity. This knowledge does not change his perception of the character as just a man who decides to do the right thing. The angle of fixation Lex has on Superman in this movie is very extreme. He's present to simply hate and destroy Superman's life. Superman is meant to prevail over these attempts, and he kinda does, by being the better man, even not allowing Lex to die at the hands of his own monstrous creation. I'm surprised that he didn't at least toss him through a couple of walls. I guess Superman has now discovered self-restraint. Luthor believes Superman is God, and God must obey certain rules that he formulated on his own. These rules were forged from Lex Luthor's tragic childhood, as he was abused by his father. For some reason, this abuse is what causes him to form such a strong hatred towards Superman. God is meant to protect all of his children. Since he allowed Lex to be abused, he must either not be all good or are powerful. With the arrival of Superman, he can finally prove this personal fact. Superman cannot be all good and all powerful. In the end, Superman saves his world. This shows that he is all good but not all powerful. But this should show that he is not even a god, that he is only human. Superman should have never been forced to live by the standards of a god. He's just someone trying to do the right thing. And it's only after his death that the world finally appreciates Superman for what he was trying to be and not what they were forcing him to be. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is one of those sequels that double down on the wrong things. There were very few things that I liked about Man of Steel, but it still at least had potential to be built upon and go in a more traditional route. I'm not a fan of Zack Snyder as a director. His surface level theming, exaggerated action, his shallow messaging, 
poor characterizations. He's like an edgelord Michael Bay. I don't think this creative team was right for a Superman project. The grim tone set by the director and writers is so dull for a Superman movie. I feel the movie would have been better if Superman was a contrast to this grey and dark world, but he's as dark as every other character. Their pretentious attempt to deconstruct Superman in the real world failed to be interesting or really say anything beyond, oh yeah, this is how it would be. Some people confuse escapism with not wanting to be reminded that women, people of color, or the LGBTQ plus community exist, but they're wrong and true escapism is being taken to a world that is not necessarily restricted to the roles of our own. Real good always triumphs over evil, where the hero learns lessons that make them a better person, where people look up in the sky and believe a man can fly and not have an existential crisis, where kind parents teach their child that they have a purpose, that they're meant for great things. Superman is the perfect character to escape through. He's the best in all of us. Of course he deals with pressure, responsibility, and identity, but that never stops him from finding the strength to keep moving forward. By leading by example, Superman shows us that we all have that strength within us. It's okay to have Superman be simple. It's okay to take maybe a complex approach to the character, but it's always important to remember that he's just someone trying to do the right thing. And the only thing he wants in return from humanity is that we try to do the right thing too. Let's see. Just over one sale, pal. Oh. Hey, what are you, some sort of punker? Huh? God, I hate punkers. Especially bald ones with green makeup. We wear masks over ugly faces. That's it. Ooh.